president here. Um, I'm gonna let him introduce himself, but like I told y'all yesterday, here's a big reason why everything, all the change you see, here's the reason why. So everybody give Dr. Allen. Good afternoon, guys. Y'all doing all right? Good deal, good deal. So glad you're all, all on campus. I appreciate, first of all, you sharing your time and talent with ICC. I'm going to guarantee you right now, if you'll put your time and talent into this building, into that field, and everything that you're doing in football, but also put your time and talent into the classroom, we're going to make you, because I've challenged these guys to make sure that they do this, they're going to make you a better student, a better player, and a better person. We know your parents, your loved ones gave us a great individual, but if we don't grow you past that as an individual, we're not doing our job. Doesn't matter if we win a national title, and yet you're maybe a better player, but if you're not a better student and a better person at the end of this experience, we've not been able to win a the national title, okay? Now, some of you may be going, yeah, but Dr. Allen, I'm not that great in the classroom. That's okay. We've got people that can help you be great in the classroom, all right? We have people that that's what they're paid to do. So y'all make sure they have a job by asking for help. It, there's nothing wrong with asking for help. In fact, the biggest shot, sign of ignorance is the inability or the unwillingness to ask for help. Okay? I have a PhD, all right? I am not the sharpest knife in the drawer, the brightest bulb on the tree. But what I figured out a long time ago is what it did take for Jay Allen to be able to complete this coursework and earn this degree. And not just complete it, but complete it really well. Now once I figured that out in college, then I could make A's and a B here and there. But I could make primarily A's. And I could graduate with honors everywhere I went. Because for me, an A meant scholarship money, a B meant maybe, and a C meant I had to go get a second job. So therefore, that was my motivation. Now, you gotta find your motivation. Pour yourself into the classroom just like you're going to do right here. I promise you will pay off. How many of you would love to play pro ball? I mean, I'd love to. There's no chance I'm going to be playing, though, okay? However, it's hard. The percentage that get to that pro level is immensely small in the grand scheme of things. But you have the ability to earn a college degree, and we're going to pay for that. Now, you're going to pay for it as well, because you're going to pay for some blood, sweat, and tears out here on the field. You can pay for it in the classroom, you can pay for it in the library, do some studying, but nobody can ever take that degree. Never, ever can they take that degree from you. Not only that, we're going to propel you to the next level. If you'll put your time and effort in, we're going to do our part. We're going to propel you to the next level. Whether you have the opportunity to play the sport or not, you're going to have the opportunity to succeed in that classroom at the next level. And that's what I hope you'll do. Because your college degree or degrees, your ability to earn comes from those degrees, from those credentials that set you apart from just the other person out there on the street. So I want to make sure that we prepare you in here and in that classroom. Again, some of you are going, but I'm not a great student. That's okay. We're going to make you a great student. If you're willing to do your part. Coach, you're going to make them a great player, right? Oh, yes, sir. But they got to be willing to do their part. you got to do their part. In the weight room, we're just standing in there, out here on the field. you got to do your part in the locker room. you got to do your part in the classroom. Because you can't be a student athlete if you're not a student first. So I want to make sure that you, you realize that. Um, we'll come back around as we get closer to season start, and we'll do what we call a Powerade visit. We'll bring you all a bottle of Powerade. We'll talk, introduce a few people to you. We do that with all of our teams, with our cheerleaders, with our band, all of those different groups that will be putting their time and talent on one of our fields or courts or diamonds. So when we do that, we'll talk a little bit more. But I want to make sure you understand, because you all are really the only people here in July in the summer. Okay, July is pretty much just football. So, first of all, campus life is going to be a little dull right now. Okay, coaches are going to keep you pretty occupied, but it changes so much when August gets here. When we get everybody on campus, those returning students, raise your hand for me real quick. A lot going on in the fall, right? There's a lot of activities. Last year, I guess we're doing it this year, first night of class, we had a block party at my house. Not in my house, I'll make sure you understand that. <laughs> Outside on the block, we closed the road off. We had all kind of blow up stuff, Duncan booth, food, DJ, great night, had a great time. Trying to get things started off in the right way so that we had student activities, things that you could do outside of the classroom, build friendships and the like. We're going to do things like that again. So just understand, summer's a little slow. 
but then it starts picking up as soon as we get back from uh, when, when schools get ready to start. Um, I need y'all to set the bar everywhere you go. When I'm talking about that bar, I'm talking about the level of behavior, attitude, how you handle yourself, decisions that you make. So let me give you an idea. In the cafeteria, again, y'all know when people here this summer for the most part eating in there. We'll have a couple of employees that'll be in there. I eat in there quite a bit myself. But if you decide in that cafeteria that you are going to stand and talk to people six tables over loud, I can hear you over everybody else, you're creating a lot of ruckus, all those things. Well then, as soon as our students get here, your colleagues, as soon as they get here this fall and you do the same thing, then they think that's the norm. And they think, well, I can do that. Then the, what we have is a cafeteria that turns into a place that nobody can enjoy. That's not the way our cafeteria is. That's not the way our campus environment is. Can you have fun? Absolutely. But I tell people all the time, I can invite anybody to come sit down in our cafeteria and have a meal at any meal time, whether coaches are in there or not, whether campus police is in there or not, doesn't matter, because it's a great environment. And you're gonna feel comfortable, you're gonna have a good meal, you're gonna, students will be polite. They'll say, hey, excuse me, we'll get forward, whatever the case may be. Hey, could you pass the salt, the napkins, whatever. It's a great environment. Our staff, that's not our staff in the cafeteria, that's Sedexo, our food service company. They love serving students when those students are both polite and thankful. They love it. You want them to be your friends because they're the ones that's handing you your food, right? It's all you can eat, so you can go back as many trips as you want. If you leave hungry, it's your own fault, or maybe it's one of coaches' fault because they told you you couldn't eat that much, I don't know. <laughs> but, but the reality is you have the ability to give them. Just treat those people with, with love and respect. I promise you it pays off anytime you do that with anybody. So all that being said, you set the bar. So if you decide that this is going to be a great atmosphere and people are going to want to come be a part of it, no matter who they are or where they're from, then that's what will happen. And they're going to come in and everybody else is going to act like y'all act. Because they're going to realize, that well, if all these guys are doing it right, I guess I'm supposed to do it right as well. Okay? Um, but if you let it be chaos, then it will be chaos. There's nothing wrong if one of your teammates gets out of line. If you want to go, hey, you can't do that here. I may walk up to you in the cafeteria, I won't do it in front of your friends, but I may walk up in the cafeteria and go, hey man, you can't, you can't do that. And you're gonna go, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't, I forgot, I, my bad. That's great. But I want us to have that kind of relationship. I eat in the cafeteria all the time, I live here on campus, my family lives here on campus, my daughter, my oldest daughter just graduated with us to be Mississippi State, my youngest is a 10th grader in high school, runs cross country, plays soccer, tennis, and um, cheerleads. So we have no free time. So, um, but I do my best to get to every one of your games home and away. I rarely miss those, but something happens sometimes with family situation. I have to miss one, but I rarely miss those. And uh, I'm going to be there to support. I do the same thing I, as much as I can with all sports. Obviously, y'all play once a week. Baseball, softball, they play like six times a week, it feels like. But I'm going to do my best to get to every one of those. I'll come and watch practice. You'll see me at my golf cart that I drive around campus. I'll come and watch practice a little bit. Especially if I can escape the office one afternoon, I'll do that. I'll watch band practice some. I'll go over and watch your soccer team's practice. Um, I'm going to see you in the cafeteria. I might ask you how practice went, how things are going, great win last night, y'all keep it up, those type of things. I want to support you. I want, this is your family. I just want people in this room at this college campus. You're going to build friendships here that can last a lifetime if you'll invest in each other. Uh, we have, in my opinion, assembled a great set of coaches. Um, Coach Bacon's done an excellent job hiring a wonderful staff that's going to, in my opinion, really take our program to the next level. And so I hope that you will listen to them, allow them to invest in you, and build you the way that you need to be. Trust them that they know what's best for you and for this team. I believe if you'll do that, it'll pay off. Um, Coach has high expectations for both how you act on and off the field. And um, you always represent ICC. That's just something you have to realize. You always represent us. You're a leader, whether you signed up to be a leader or not, because we have, what's our roster size? Six, 65. 65. How many of y'all know somebody that believes and wishes they were right here in this room? Absolutely. Probably, how many of you know 10 people? Same thing, right? They believe they could be here. They may not need to be here.
they believe they could, right? They wish they could. They wish they had that opportunity to have. How many of your high school classmates are not playing college ball? A bunch, right? A bunch. You're a leader because you're getting to do something that most people don't get to do. So I ask you to make sure that you take that role and you live it out. You set the example in here, out there, in that weight room, in the cafeteria, in the library, and in the classroom. That you show people how to act in the classroom. You know, one of the unique things about a college classroom is they're sophomores. People don't really talk in class. Do they? Now, in high school, I was student body president, and if I could get away with talking in a classroom, it was going to happen. I was going to be cutting up, you may have fun with my buddies. But I got to college and I realized really quick, the better notes I took, the more likely I was to make an A and the less time I probably, probably had to spend studying once I figured out how to make it work for me. So what's unique about that is there's very little talking going on in a college classroom unless the teachers ask for that to occur, the faculty member has. So you go in there, you take good notes, you stay awake. Taking good notes helps you stay awake. You make eye contact with that instructor, I promise you it will pay off. The J. Allen way to an A. Okay, y'all might want to write this down. It's really good to write down. But I'm telling you, this is my way. I always found a reason to go build a relationship with that instructor early, early on in the semester. So I may know everything that's going on. I understand everything we've discussed. I feel like my notes are great. But I'm going to find some reason in the first two weeks or so to go up and say, Ms. Brown, I don't know that I got this quite right. Can, can you tell me if I got this right? Look, yep, no, you missed this. This is the part you were missing right here, whatever. So what that does, it's say, hey, I'd say, I'm Jay Allen. I'm in your 10 o'clock class if I went to their office hour. Or if I went up after class, hey, I'm Jay Allen. I wonder if you could help me. Because what I've done is I've created a relationship where they know I care about my coursework. I didn't have to do that. But they know I care about it. I'm focused on it. So then later on when I've got a tougher situation come up and I go and ask for help, they're going to know, well, he's committed. He's committed to what he's doing. And so I want to make sure I help this guy out because he's all in. Whether he's the brightest person or not, he's trying his best. That will go a long way. I promise you will. Plus, they now know you out of the 30 people or 25 people or whatever in that room. They know you to a degree, and they don't know everybody else. So they don't. They make eye contact with you because we're now friends. Right? we got a relationship. And so now, oh, crud, she's looking at me. So i got to stay awake because we've got a relationship here. We know each other. We communicate. So we encourage you to do that. You have to find the trick that works for you, keeps you awake in the class, keeps you focused, because that will cut down on your study time. You've got to cut down on all the things you have to do outside the classroom to make that A. Don't settle for B's and C's just because strive for that A always. Then if you miss the mark a little, it's not that big a deal. All right? Um, I hope you're going to have a wonderful time at ICC. I've worked at it. Four community colleges, three in Mississippi, uh, two of the largest ones in the state, one out of state that didn't have sports or residence halls, and I missed that tremendously, so I was so glad to get back. I was president of Hopkinsville, Kentucky. I had the opportunity to come back to Mississippi and come here. I've been here six years now. This is a unique environment. This does not exist in most places, I can tell you right now. And so you're at a wonderful place. You help to make it continue to be a wonderful place, so I hope you'll do that. Um, I can't wait to see you perform out here. I can't wait for that. But I know the work you'll put in this summer and beyond makes that possible. Invest in each other. Guarantee you the better relationships you have with the people in this room, the better you're going to perform out there. Because you're in it together. You cannot do it by yourself, right? And you can't do it without these guys and the rest of the staff. you got to invest. These two guys over here, Lee Adams and um, Raphael Henry, are two of our sports information staff. They are immensely talented. They do so many things with social media. Lee does social media for all of our athletic programs. Raphael does video work for all of our athletic programs. They work with us on so many different projects outside of athletics as well. But the great thing is they're telling your story to the world. Like what they're doing. Share what they're doing. Retweet that. Whatever the case may be because that helps to promote what we're doing. Because what y'all also have to do is to make this an environment where that next elite recruit wants to be. And that's how we grow the program. Our goal already should be that next year it's going to be even better than it is right now. And we do that by making sure we create that environment where people want to be a part of this. So you'll see these guys around. Adam Gore is our Director of Sports Information. 
immensely talented as well. They bring in other people to stream every one of these games, on air and the like talent. It's just tremendous what they do. Again, some of you, South Carolina, where are you? South Carolina, you've got some Florida, Georgia, right? Louisiana, so some of your parents and family can't get here, right? But they can watch it online. It's quality. When I show family our streaming, they're like, that's y'all? I'm like, yeah, that's us. And they're like, yeah, that looks like professionally done. I said, well, it is professionally done. We just are able to do it on a community college budget. It's amazing what they can do. So that's the other advantage is your family's going to be able to watch that. And um, you got a relative that's overseas in the military, they can jump online and watch it as well. It's a great thing. It's all free, provided out there. So you're at a great place, invest in it, pour yourself into it, I promise you it'll even be better, you'll have a lot of fun. I'll see you on campus, say hey, you'll see me drive my golf cart like I stole it, because pretty much that's how I drive it all the time. And uh, there is a break on it, I just don't use it very often, all right? So uh, you may have to get out of the way, because like I say, I, I'm, I'm moving pretty fast, but um, that's just what I do. So thank you all so much, I look forward to getting to know you and seeing you around, glad to have you. Kirk Herbstreet is a man of many talents. Not only an athlete and a sportscaster, but also an expert cartographer, an amateur alchemist, a surprisingly gifted poet. What rhymes with encroachment? But his true talent lies in the art of banking. With Renaissance Bank's great products, rewards, and easy to use online tools, every transaction is a masterpiece. You might refer to Kirk as a Renaissance man. But I call myself a Renaissance man.